This video is not approved by anyone. Welcome. Okay, we're just gonna watch this little video of Sydney. It's like a hurricane out here. May as well just make a video. Sorry if you can hear the hurricane. Old Sydney. Ye old Sydney. Sydney, Australia. And remember, prisoners were sent to Sydney, Australia to suffer. They were bad people. They were sent to this remote island. And look at what they did. What a go they had of it. One after another. Just looking like anything we see anywhere. The shaping of of coastlines and we see shacks and we also see wondrous works of architecture like that castle back there not the australia i'd imagined not at all here a hotel they've just painted hotel on the top look at these brick and stone and then shacks very royal and really you could be in any city here look at all this stonework go prisoners a lot of infrastructure giant oversized buildings horse and buggy and all this stuff is already there same scenario antiquitech what a skyline 1890 mud flooded buildings look at this unbelievable in every way i wanted to watch this video and thought i would try an experiment here we go a day at the shitty beach fully dressed colonial style homes not the australia i imagined far from the bush Look at this, in ruins too, in absolute ruins, weathered, horse and buggy, everything in place, an arcade, books, look at this, unnecessary. Again, we're supposed to be in the bush, and there's a complete disconnect with what they tell us about the narrative of Australia. When it looks as glorious as any city, right from the beginning, we really have to question whether the history is being honest with us, that's all. A people are a people. We're very simple today, we don't require anything elaborate. We live in boxes, skyscrapers are just giant cubes. We don't care, and these people don't care either. People are people, like animals are animals. Everything having their nature, and our nature doesn't care. This was built by a people, but not these early horse and wagon people. These people are looking for heat. And look at this mind blower. Come on, get out of here. Victoria Markets? And it's in ruins. The Sydney Gasworks in ruins? This is an awesome showcase. Really loving this showcase. What is this? What kind of building is this for Australia? What explanation could be given? The narrative reads so differently than what it actually looks like. Look at this castle. A castle, and then they put some crap on top. You see that crap? Look at that mind blower in the background. That's the same one we saw. Everything is so elaborate. Okay, this is a stupid thing. But here, mud streets, fully built out. This is just some downtown Main Street. Here a castle, whatever they would tell us this castle is for. And notice all the tech. Just teched out to the T in 1870 before power? Here we go, this is more like it. This is what we should expect. All over the place, the Hippodrome, 1915. Totally insulting, the most beautiful city ever again in Australia. Look at this, Hyde Park, that monument. This is something else. Here we go again, King Street, 1908. So beautiful, so, so beautiful. 1920s. Just people willing to do anything, working at factories, not needing this intricacy. And here we go, just mostly abandoned. Unbelievable. We could be anywhere. Anywhere at all. Just somebody's house. 1936. Wow. I mean, just the stone. We'd have to disassemble mountains if we're following the narrative to build all of this. What a gorgeous, gorgeous city. And here we go, a little shack. So we see what they do when they build. And Luna Park, as we see all over the world, everyone seemed to designate something Luna Park. Here the museum, in this time period, you have a museum? You're just getting started. What are you putting in the museum? And these trolleys just all over the countryside? All over the bush? What a rough go of the bush these people had. Here again, Newtown. 
Looks like old town. And just old, old. This could be some European city that we're told is a thousand years old. But no, here's what it must have looked like when they rolled up. And here the construction, maybe, of this. And look at there, just cheap signs, just like in America, just like everywhere. Painting stupid signs on these beautiful buildings. I mean, if you could build these beautiful buildings, you would make a beautiful sign, right? I mean, forgive me. Dulwich Hill. Woolworths. And this is just encompassing the same M.O. as we see everywhere. They just threw some people in. Maybe they threw prisoners in, in Occupied. Or maybe they threw prisoners in this city just to get it going. Or orphans. Whatever. However they populated. Look, the windows are missing. And look at the ruts in the road. Just shit. And then there's tech. You're gonna have tech and you can't even have a road. We're about halfway through Central Pitt Street. 1940s. Everything the same. Uh, the oldest photos we saw, it was all the same. Here we can see mud flooded windows. What did they do? What did they do? As we progress, nothing changes. It's like Sydney, old Sydney, boom, overnight. And we've seen overnighters. We have San Francisco, Salt Lake City, the overnight cities. And it's just really shocking because this is so far out of the way. How do people even get here? I was always told that Australians were really crafty because they didn't have access to things being out in the middle of nowhere. And these photos tell everything but such follies. Just having a gay old time here. Tons of brick, zillions and zillions of bricks. Spring Street, unbelievable. Look at this cathedral. Look at the weathering on this cathedral. Just at the top, wow. St. Andrew's Town Hall, 1900. Castle and shithole. Here we go, shithole that they built. The New Zealand Hotel. Look at all the trash and crap all over the place. Probably just pulling out bodies. And here we go, another dump. Here it looks like there's some brick. They've just kind of repurposed this into, I don't know what. I don't know what, but this makes more sense. This is what people would do, not things like this. The stock exchange, early 1900s, are you kidding me? Town Hall, 1932. How long does something like this take to build? This city would take hundreds of years to build. There's just no time for the narrative they give us. And I'm not gonna get into that. Here we see the rocks, and this, looks partially rebuilt. Here, look how old this stone wall is. I mean, you really can see the hand of the new people because it hasn't changed much. Again, it's the way my house looks and the way most people build today. It's very simple. But here we have this old weathered stone. Look at this, streets of brick in the bush. The brick bush, unbelievable. I'm so blown away. And I'm glad I didn't just watch this. I'm glad I'm just talking and one way or another I'll share this with you all. This is so, so mind-blowing. Look at these kids. Look at the age of this. Just overly massive, over the top. Again, town hall, castle next door, Trocadero, like the building in Paris for the World's Fair. It's like the same people were here writing the narratives, naming things. That was a total mud flutter right there. I have to go back to that. Okay, enough of me for a minute. Let's just look at these pictures like I intended to. Look at this. Bricked up arches, totally repurposed. It almost seems like the old world bricked up their own windows in anticipation for a reset. Because even the bricking up is done by the old hand, it seems like. Look at this, I'm not sure what's going on back here. But again, streets of mud. Nothing has changed. By the time the automobile rolls around, we're just still dealing with... These people didn't have to do anything, is my point. They just rolled into a city and began enjoying themselves, as should they. I would too. How fun to inherit a city. Again, reminding me of so many movies that portray this. And look how junky their stuff is. Look at their store, isn't even nice. That is so junky. Just pieced together. Look at this super tech. Super tech. And thank you, Peter M. Bett, for publishing this. Oh, you had some Schumann playing. Maybe I'll have to play some Schumann in spirit of your video. This guy's awesome, Dr. Gabor Mate. I recommend getting to know his work. Right here I'm doing a little research on catacombs. 
and we could research above ground all day long. But here, in my opinion, is what the entire realm used to look like. Now buried. Now called catacombs. Now filled with bones. People clearly had to hide out in these cities for a long time. I think that's why we see all the bones. A worst case scenario. Being trapped indoors for years with a bunch of hungry people. Many movies on the subject. And nothing could be more amazing. At least right now for me. Again, we are completely in the dark, trying to figure out what took place above ground. So many anomalies up there. Our history telling us they're throwing up buildings in one year, like the Empire State and the courthouse in Spokane, Washington. Here, this particular site was in Odessa, in the Ukraine. Or is it just Ukraine? Is that like saying the America? And again, to stack bones like art, is the part that tells me they had a lot of time. To polish bones, as we've discussed in the past, implies that the bones were boiled, pulling every ounce of meat off of them, and rendering them somewhat clean, to now stack in this artistic fashion. The fact that they decorate these in a religious fashion may lend to the idea of a people clinging to the husk of their beliefs in a time where it must have been very difficult to. And talk about a poltergeist, to think that people are having breakfast right above this somewhere. Not for me. But otherwise, the bones are just in the way. The bones are an afterthought, and unfortunately they become the big focus. What is more interesting is this whole underrealm. Why is nobody explaining why there's entire cities and passageways underground here. The size of the city underground. So much unexplored. And the bones, I think, similar to petroglyphs, become the center of attention. When I think the whole underrealm is much more noteworthy. And in our community, such things are not shocking. In the mud flood realm, we understand that every single city has at least one floor buried. And even in your city, you can go walk around downtown and you'll see the tops of little arches that have been bricked up. No exception. In some cases, we're able to explore, but in most cases not. Somebody is keeping us captive. Whoever has the authority to put bars and a padlock over an entrance is keeping us prisoner. We're not allowed to go under. We're not allowed to fly. Even if we created a craft, it's all restricted. Permission must be granted. No going up, no going down, no going beyond certain boundaries within our known realm and without. And when we get little peaks of what is beyond and what is above and below, it's absolutely mind-blowing and disheartening. And now on with what I wanted to show you. The Piri Reese map is a world map compiled in 1513 by an Ottoman admiral and cartographer, Piri Reese. Approximately one third of the map survives. It shows the western coast of Europe and North Africa and the coast of Brazil with very reasonable accuracy. Various islands are depicted, as is the mythical island of Antia, looking very man-made, and we see all these lines running through it, all these ley lines, and that's what we're going to discuss. The map's historical importance lies in its demonstration of the extent of exploration of the New World, around 1510. And of course, they tell us Columbus made this voyage in 1492, but here, less than 20 years later, we have a map a well-detailed map of these lands that Columbus was said to have recently discovered. So how could we have this detailed map? And here's that map. You can see they told us that a portion of it has been lost or ripped off. And they told us it shows parts of Africa. And I thought it'd be interesting to have some program that would lay a modern map on top of this, or vice versa. Make some kind of sense of what the rest of this map was of. And here again, we see all these ley lines. And let me just take you to this website, leylines.net. And someone just shared this with me, and I do appreciate it. And here it just takes Google Earth and lets you lay things on top of it 
whatever they offer. Here, if I click add data, we can see the different options I get. All kinds of grids, and I clicked caves and underground cities. We could also add churches and monasteries. Awesome. And here's the Cave of the Crystals, not too far off of this ley line. And I am just starting to use this for the first time, so I'm a little rusty, forgive me. But here, they gave me the option to lay this Piri Reese map on top of the Google. So I said okay, and it has placed it where it needs to be. And here I can change the opacity, you see. And in fact, let me take these grids off. Okay, so super cool. Super, super cool. What is going on here? We see Africa, Portugal, and here South America. A large chunk of the map. And up here, this little chunk, perhaps the part that has been torn off, is North America. And this map may be showing what the region looked like before the Gulf, or the cataclysmic blast. But nonetheless, I didn't place it here. The AI did, and doing a good job. Following Central America down to South America. Very interesting how the center is right here. What is this? Clearly the hub of all of these ley lines. And clearly someone was trying to conceal part of this map. And what do we see? Are these cities? Are these towers? Really reminding me of a photo that I have in Iceland. An old map showing skyscrapers in Iceland. In a very old map. And same with over here in Africa. What did somebody not want us to see? Unbelievable. Of course, we've discussed old maps showing cities and what look like rainforests in parts of Africa that are now deserts. And here, even this map showing a lot of waterways and a lot of artificial looking waterways that we will have discussed in many videos. Artificial canals from a past people. And here in the 1500s, we have these artificial canals. Charted, well charted, well charted coastlines. Up here, castles. And let's change the opacity. And here we go. Just wastelands. Very interesting. Even these forests lining up with modern times, but not being forest today. My chickens just made a weird sound. Here's a kind of lake. And today it's a lake. Let's zoom in here. Very interesting. Lending credibility to this. Let's do it again. Let me zoom out a little. And having a different configuration, of course, but seeming to still be there. Pretty massive. And a very nice tool. And if I was just beginning this research, I might be shocked. But to me, it's not shocking. And even the ley lines, not shocking to me that these cathedrals should be located on the ley lines, as we see here. Here, cathedral in the UK, and Notre Dame in Paris. Down here, right on the line, the Basilica of St. Peter, the Vatican. And actually, that spot on the map, that was kind of like the navel there, is not too far off from this point. What could we do with this? We could add the Silk Road to it. No, nope, it doesn't want us to do that. Forbidden History. So this is a really cool site, or at least on their way to being underwater ruins. And they're pointing all around India. Not surprising. And not surprising at all when we see how artificial this coastline is. And all of this is just mind-blowing. One of my favorite things to explore is the making of land. Forget about a damn building, which is just like a speck. These people, this civilization, made the land and didn't just make it stupid. Functional, again, because they were a seafaring, water-traveling people. Look at this. Perfect inlet to come in. How could people just think this was natural? Very exciting. I went over my 10 or 15 minutes. I think I'm gonna feed the pets and try to jump back on. And this looks like Utah in the background, but it could be anywhere. Here again, these guys standing here. It says Sunnyside, Utah, but this is not the site. I would have seen one block, one, and there was none. Nothing like this. This is another site, and they're just labeling these photos whatever they want. 
Now here's the curve, and what I proposed is the disassembling of these kilns. And this man with the hose just spraying everything off. Already looking old and cracked. If you just built these, why would you just be sitting up here already? Oh, these babies are coming down. And here again, this is simply not the site. This is very fascinating. I would love to visit this one. And so whoever put these archives together had not visited either. Or they had and they just didn't care. Here I've made an incredible discovery with the old lime kilns in Salt Lake. Just incredible. Pictures of these kilns seemingly before they were restored. I even found one here of what I believe is exactly what they must have stumbled upon. Looking in its natural state. And the dates are actually very recent. Date of photograph 1979. And they make them look so old. All these pictures, if you didn't look carefully, are actually very recent, taken in black and white, no need. And again, the Cyclopean style that I've been speaking about lately. What we would think is primitive, but is actually, in effect in this case, lined with brick on the inside. This is the Salt Lake City lime kiln. Now everything has grown over, much more grass. And here many of you will recognize the site that Chief and I visited. Now they have iron gates over these and looking a lot more dry back then. Here again, the condition that these would have been found in, I believe. Now there's houses around here and you'll recall how outraged I was that there was a house right here and that they were letting ivy grow along this one. And I peeked down here and it was now private property. I was very upset that they had sold out history. Here again, before they put the iron gates up. And because I visit these sites, right away I recognize them once again. And this is a fascinating collection. All kinds of kilns all over Utah. Well, thank you for being here today. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know your thoughts about anything. Have a blessed day. I love you all, and I'll see you soon. Sometimes we just shoot for too much. I think I have about 10 minutes in me. If I tell a little story, I could drag it out to 15. Little story, the vinegar tasters. One of my favorite Taoist paintings depicting the Buddha, Lao Tzu, and Confucius, or maybe Jesus. It doesn't matter. You could throw yourself in there. And they're all tasting the vinegar with the finger and making an expression. That's it. This painting sums up volumes. We know there's vinegar and we see their reaction to the vinegar. And the reaction to the vinegar is your reaction to life. And the Buddha has some suffering look on his face because that's what the Buddhist believes. That life is suffering and you should in short renounce everything to attain enlightenment. And so the vinegar was suffering. And everyone makes their face, and then comes Lao Tzu. And Lao Tzu dips, and tastes, and smiles. Now the painting can't sum everything up. One would have to read the teachings of Lao Tzu. And I've pondered this idea for years. And it's something that is unknowable, open for endless interpretation. But today I feel like... I feel like he was saying that life will always be a pile of shit. Life will always give you vinegar. And the fundamental principle of Taoism is acceptance. Number one. And so it is no different. We taste the vinegar and we smile. Of course. And often by taking the bitterness and not running from it, we are left with a sweetness. Certainly vinegar is very good for the system. As opposed to taking the sweetness in advance, and always seeking the sweetness, such as sugar, as a nutritional example, like the vinegar, which is initially sweet and leaves you sour in the guts. The opposite of the vinegar, 